Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Tom Wells here. Today is Monday, June the 25th, 2018. 8 a.m. Eastern Time, your first daily dose of happy for the day and for the week, for that matter. We got 10 do- ten doses we do every week, two a day, Monday through Friday. And uh, we hope that you enjoy them well enough that uh, you'll keep coming to all of them. Actually, we find that's exactly what happens. Uh, the people who subscribe and, and listen to us regularly, they they really listen to us regularly, Tom. I mean, they're listening you know, 30, 45 times a month, somewhere in that range. And it's like, whoa, yay, we got some fans here. This that's, is great. That's awesome. That's yeah. like uh dedication i'm telling you so That's yeah beautiful. i mean if, if, if you're one of the new listeners and, and you haven't subscribed yet the instructions on how to do that are right on the home page it's really easy it takes about a minute it's free doesn't cost you anything and i tell you people who listen they love it so much i mean they, they, it's become a part of their daily lives so you know try it you're going to find that it really helps pick you up it really is your your daily dose of happy so take a time take a moment to do it and then share with your friends the fact that you did it that you decided to subscribe so, Tom, how you doing? How was your weekend? Oh, it was good. It was real good. I uh, went to a big party with a bunch of old friends and spent a lot of time with my new partner, um, the nice. same woman I've been with for a while, but I'm, now she's, now I'm calling her my partner. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's really, really good. A lot of good changes, a lot of good insight, a lot of good realization, clarity, and fun and um it did get cold yesterday it was really cool it mm. actually for the first time this summer and one of the not the first time but it was hadn't been cool in a while and this week it's going back it's going to actually go to 100 wow but uh today right now it's 50 which is fantastic <laughs> yeah really that's gonna get 50 degrees warmer <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild. that's the desert for you right i mean it, it ranges all over yeah. the place yeah i love the desert for that reason it's really amazing we get that in New yeah. England and, and we start, you know, rolling our eyes like, well, that's New England weather. Just, you know, if you don't like it, wait 10 minutes and it'll change. But <laughs> Oh, is that what they say that, up that, there too? The, oh, yeah, that's the uh, the catchphrase. Oh, I, I think, didn't know that. They yep. say that so many places. Yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's U.S. weather. U.S. weather changes a lot. I mean, oh. you know, in certain areas of the country, it's fairly predictable. I mean, right now, for instance, in the Deep South, it's, you know, they're, they're counting on being really hot and uncomfortable for quite some time to come. But, you yeah. know. For the most part, most areas of the country, yeah, it's fairly changeable. I mean, I always felt that that's why um, so many millions of people ended up in Southern California is oh, because yeah. it's so constant. You know, it's like the Mediterranean, or you've got the ocean there that modulates the temperature, it's surrounded oh, yes. by mountains, and so it's this little valley. I mean, the whole Southern California basin, as they call it. Right. But boy, growing up there was was just so reliable. You just knew exactly what each season was going to be like. You knew, you know, you could just have your clothes. You knew what it was going to, how the changes were going to go. Yeah, it is really different in where I live now in Colorado. Plus, so anyone, did you who lives, good, anyone who lives um, near the Great Lakes, I mean, the Great Lakes are definite weather changers uh uh-huh. the, the weather patterns that come off the lakes is, is really quite phenomenal so that i think is the is one of the big reasons that plus the east coast obviously with with the uh, moderating effect of the atlantic but the combination there not only does it moderate but the two can actually combine together to create stuff that's how we get some of our biggest yeah. snowstorms for instance the combination uh-huh. of lake effect snow and, and oceanic snow coming together so yeah i mean yeah. It, it's crazy the weather around here it really is <laughs> yeah so how was your weekend Oh, was yesterday totally was fabulous. Awesome? Yeah, yesterday, Louise and I, I, I was talking about this on last night's podcast with David, but last night, uh, yesterday, Louise and I did something we haven't done. I think we've done it once before since we've been together, and most people haven't done it in, in ages unless they have kids. We went to a planetarium show. Oh, we those went, are fun. We went to Boston to a planetarium show at the Hayden Planetarium, and uh, nice. the, their facility is very nice. They, they did a, a complete um, reconstruction redo of the, uh, of the planetarium facility and yeah. it was just it was it was just in really great shape and um, it was a good show i mean boy the shows have changed since we were kids i mean you know when we were kids right we, you'd go to the planetarium and there'd be the, the projector would project these dots on the wall or on the <laughs> ceiling rather and, and the guy with the pointer would be pointing to all okay, yeah. that's jupiter and this is venus uh-huh. and so forth you know today it's like a, a computerized video show <laughs> yeah it's pretty wild. It's quite different what they do now and I like the uh, Pink Floyd ones. <laughs> the Pink Floyd ones? <laughs> Have you seen those? <laughs> no, I haven't. It's a common planetarium show is uh, is this whole galaxy, beautiful universe visual thing that to the music of Pink Floyd. 
and you can't I'm go imagining wrong. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong with that stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Pink I, Floyd I always used I, to depress me, so I think I probably could go wrong with it. But you know, oh, hey, okay. if you like Pink you Floyd, to, sure, that'd be great. You know, they used to depress you. Yeah, no, I um, I just love Pink Floyd, or I used to. I mean, now I listen to the lyrics and even the music. Is I realize it's not as incredible as I used to think because there's so much good music that's similar that's out there now that that's all I listen to like uh all day long I mean I've got that kind of music on Spotify I just love it you know anyway hey that's great if that's what floats your boat I mean it floats I, my I, boat Walt. don't make I, fun of me I, I'm not I'm just saying that for me when, when, when I hear you know there is no pain you are receding I say to myself that's not really the message I want to hear <laughs> <laughs> yeah really yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't need no <laughs> yeah, <right. education>. <laughs> 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 I love that song because I was so anti-school. Yeah, I hear you on that one. I definitely hear you on that one. But, <laughs> no, actually, it was a great weekend. Not only did we go to uh, the planetarium, but you know, if you're in Boston, it's like a legal requirement, state law. You have to go have seafood. And, oh. you know, so we were on a seafood diet, basically, for the wow. day. And you saw the food that. and you ate it. You know, that's the seafood diet, right? You seafood, you eat it. Wow. Well, I lived well, there for a whole year and never had any seafood. Really? Oh. Well, I wasn't eating meat. I wasn't eating any kind of Oh, animal. I see. I, yeah. Nothing that had, had, had eyes that looked at you or anything. Oh, uh, I understand. But, uh, well, they chop it up for me. I don't have to look at the eyes. <laughs> but uh yeah oh it was a uh, lobster roll and clam chowder and oh uh, it was just you know pure new england seafood it was really good. Mm. really really yeah good. Mm. sounds awesome yeah. especially when you grow up around that stuff and you love it right yeah i mean i well i actually grew up in upstate new york and we did have some access to seafood there but when i moved to connecticut after college um except for those uh, 11 years in virginia pretty much most of the time i've been in connecticut and yeah, you get really exposed to seafood and you, and you get a little bit finicky about it. I mean, oh, I was yeah. never terribly a finicky kid growing up because my mom's cooking was never all that great anyway. So, you know, I ate whatever I could get, but uh, you know, I hope your I, mom doesn't listen to this podcast. No, not really. Well, actually she'd probably agree with me. <laughs> and she, she'd, she'd go further to say, you know, she is so glad she's not in the kitchen anymore, but, but uh, no, I mean, it's it's not like she was a bad cook. It's just that she wasn't really skilled at you know putting spices together and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. the cooking was rather bland. But um, <laughs> and I guess you know for kids theoretically that's a good idea. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. When when I got to Connecticut and after I met Louise, who's really a very good cook, um, my my I don't know what to call it. My uh, will, willingness to put up with inferior seafood diminished. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've gotten to be the, something of the connoisseur on it, and like clam chowder, that's my uh, that's my barometer, so to speak. You know, if I go to a restaurant, I'm checking out the restaurant for the first time. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll try the clam yeah. chowder. If the clam chowder is good, the rest of the food is probably good. You know, and and I found wow. that rule to really be true. Um, but you travel outside of the New England area or outside of the Northeast, all of a sudden the quality of seafood flavoring and seafood preparation just plummets. It's really something. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. seafood in New England really is well, well done. I mean, they, they just do a great job. And I think it's because, you know, the seafood is, is a main staple in New England. So, of course, the sure. chefs are going to try to develop that to their best of their ability. Sure. They got a huge history. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so. I could talk about seafood for the whole hour. But, oh, you could? Um, well, you know, we better not. But, well, because <laughs> my, my ex-wife was uh, owned a seafood restaurant and a seafood store. Oh, no kidding. Called. Oh, I didn't know that. So that's when I got introduced to seafood in a big way by being with her for 15 years. Yeah, yeah. So I could go on and on about how you select your fish and all that stuff. But let's not. Well, I, I'll just ask you one thing. Tuned in. Just one. No, it's not. But but they did they did tune in for the daily dose of happy, and I have to say, at okay, least for me, so seafood is a happy. There's no doubt about it. So I just got to ask you one thing: What's your favorite yeah. seafood dish? Well, I tell you the best thing I ever had. Okay. Um, it was a big hunk of grouper in Miami Beach at a really nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I never knew what grouper was. I mean, oh. as far as how good it was, you know. Yeah. And it just blew my mind. I can still think of that today. And I think the other best thing I've ever had has been sushi um, because I just fell in love with it in the 80s or when was that? Yeah. 
I think it was the eighties. And uh, yeah. And it just became like this. Wow. That is really good stuff. You know, and you put wasabi on it and soy sauce. And, yeah. um, I don't eat it as much anymore because there's a lot, a lot more fear today about what's in fish, you know, but I still really, really liked it. So, but I could, I could always love a really, really good piece of fresh wild caught salmon or mm. uh, a seared ahi tuna, you know, just barely seared and, you know, that's fantastic. Melts in your mouth. How about you? Uh, I just, well, I, first of all, I decided a, a number of years ago not to be afraid of the fish. So, you know, I just, don't oh. even, I don't even think about that anymore. Okay. And, yeah, you know. no, it's fine. You're going to live to be 200 or something. right? <laughs> can't remember, but it was really a long time. Yeah. But what's my so favorite? I don't know what my favorite is. I mean, I, there are a few kinds of seafood that I just don't eat just because I'm not really crazy about them, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, I like lobster. I like crab. Um, I like clam chowder. I like uh, I like the the, the main ones. Um, yeah. and by main, I I also mean M A I N E. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maine yeah. lobster is no disrespect to Boston, but Maine lobster is the best in the world. Okay. And I think That's it's because it's because of the northern clime. Uh, the the I mean, lobster is best in the spring. And it's best when it comes right from cold water. And okay. that's exactly what Maine has. So okay. as a result, their lobster is just, ugh, <laughs> it's just amazing. Huh. I mean, you, you add some, some clarified butter and you don't need anything else. You don't need a rest of a meal. It's just, that's it right there. You know, right, sit on a picnic right, bench right. and you're done. <laughs> no, I know people who love lobster. That's my my stepson. That's his his go-to thing. No matter when we'd go out, you know, oh, can I get the lobster? Okay. I and remember then, when uh, we were in Seattle, I decided I'd never had king crab. So I decided to have king crab. And, and it does taste very much like lobster. I mean, it, it, it really looks like lobster that, you know, just is shaped wrong. But... <laughs> <laughs> But it's deformed uh, lobster. It's deformed lobster. That's it. <laughs> Yum. I love eating deformed fish. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I lobster is definitely going to be near the top. I mean, very often when we go out for seafood, I'll have a lobster roll just because, you know, it's especially if it comes with clarified butter. There's yes. something about that. I don't know yeah. what it is, but there's something about yeah, chunks know. of lobster dipped in I, butter that just, oh, God, it's Yeah, oh, I know. It's to die for anything. Ugh. But, of course, I can eat anything dipped in butter. And it's <laughs> well, there's that, too. But yes. lobster is – I know lobster. Lobster is amazing. I just never got into cracking cracking it open. Oh, I, I've given up on that. Because I, haven't, I, I didn't grow up with that. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was pretty It was pretty traumatic the first time I did it, but I've gotten to the point now. I just let the chef do it. I don't even bother with that. I just eat the oh. meat. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, that makes it really easy. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah why, why should you have to do all the work, right? Some people like doing all that and sucking the marrow out of the bones. And Not everything. for me. No, thank you. Yeah. And when, right. I, when I want to have a, 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 an enjoyable seafood dinner, I want to enjoy the whole thing. I don't want to have to well, fight I didn't for even it. know you could have the chef do it. See, that's how Oh, it Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that's what a lobster really roll is. A lobster roll is all well, the... Well, yeah, uh, I've had lobster rolls, yeah, yeah but so of course, yeah. But I didn't all, know that yeah. you could go order a lobster and the chef would crack it open for you. Well, usually like a lobster tail. You know, that, uh-huh. that's what lobster okay. tail is. Lobster tail is where they crack it open for you. Okay, well, see, yeah. I'm learning something even more. There you go, yeah. So, <sighs> now that we've got everybody hungry, we should talk about what the topic is. Yeah. Let's see if we can get them hungry. Actually, I don't think we're going to have any trouble getting people hungry for the topic because it's at the <laughs> foremost of everyone's minds who is in any way trying to practice the law of attraction. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. And anyone who's got any kind of a business or um, career who's being assigned projects or who has assigned themselves a project to do. Um, whether it's work related or home related or romance related, <laughs> if you're making a project out of dating. Uh, oh, yeah. So, how do any of your big projects get completed successfully? And how do you enjoy the process if you can every step of the way? Well, it could be as somebody as who's, as who's trying to overcome a dread disease, too. I mean, that's really a project. Yeah, and it's a too. major yeah. goal that they're, gaining, that they're aiming for. So, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it applies across the board, really. It does. It does. And, and and that's why, of course, the way that you address a project is similar to how a law of attraction really addresses everything. <laughs> but it's good to uh, to go back over it and talk about it because it's I'm at the point. The reason I picked this topic today is because I'm at the point where I'm addressing this big project of creating a 
uh, six or eight week long group coaching program that's going to have you know all these modules that i'm creating and then it's going to be need to be marketed and so you market a big project and you want to get 10 or 12 people in your program and then you want to do it four times a year that whole thing becomes a project Mm, oh it sure does (laughs) Um, especially creating the content right and and then the marketing is still a big mystery to me in a lot of ways so how do i how do i not think of that whole thing as oh my gosh i've got this on my shoulders or this is a big deal and where do i begin or boy i better get all my ducks in a row so that this is all going to unfold the way i want it to and i was looking on the website of the of the group training that i'm part of to learn all this stuff and someone on facebook had posted a picture to, so that everyone else could see what she had just ordered and put on her wall and it was about a six foot long by three feet high giant plastic coated chart of um of like three months and but it was literally six or eight feet long and three or four feet high it was big Mm -hmm. and you could write on this with a erasable marker so she could then see the complete development of her whole project from beginning to end you know of her group coaching project And I remembered the days that I used to try to do projects that way. I literally had, I had one that was three feet by two feet, but it was a a big chart that I could write in all this stuff. And to me, projects had to be approached as a giant, huge undertaking that you, you, the smartest way you could get it done was by mapping out everything on calendars, you know, and then once you put a date on something, and that date's coming or that date's there, you better be getting that done or you're gonna, not going to be in sync with your unfolding project. You know, it's funny when and- you're talking about that. It <laughs> reminds me of something that programmers do. Computer programmers will often create what is sometimes called a mind map. It's one of these yes. little diagrams, right, where you, you uh-huh. put little little balloons, little circles, and each circle yes. has, has like a thing to be done. And then they're all connected by lines. So you have like this, yes. you know, this thing going on like that. And yeah. that that was like the – in fact, there are schools, there are programming schools that teach that and require you to understand how to do that and, and learn how to do it regularly so that you can map out the project or whatever it is you're going to build and you know, write your programming code about. And mm-hmm. I, the only reason I mention that is, honestly, they give me a headache. I mean, I yeah. look at those things and I say to myself, WTF? What is this? I don't understand what this thing is. You know, unless I'm the one who put it together, I don't get it. And, and there's something about those kinds of things that when I look at them, they just don't make sense to me. Write something out in text, man, I've got that instantly. But put it into that kind of a mind map thing and I get lost. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I had I got two books on mind mapping over the last uh, 10 years mm. and um, they both came I, anyway, I got two books on mind mapping and I studied them and I got good at mind mapping. And so if I had a big, you know, all my big projects, which I was constantly trying to do, especially the last 10 years of creating a new business, I would make these mind maps. Mm. And um, and I agree with you um, <laughs> in so many ways, all the things I used to do from big charts to writing it out on a paper to putting it all on the computer in a spreadsheet to every way of saying, this is how I'm going to get this project done. I'm going to be so organized that I will see it all and I will do it in the right sequence and I will get it done and I will be successful has not been my ticket to success at all. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been my ticket to frustration and and feeling that the weight of the world is on my shoulders and I have a whole lot to do that then becomes overwhelming and I, now I'm not putting down people who can do that because I think there's some people who pride themselves on their ability to knock off a list of things and to have it on a really great spreadsheet and to be able to see it all and to make it happen. And they, they literally teach workshops in it, oh, yeah. which I'm fine, you know, like, and I'm amazed in a way these days at how many people in all the different seminars and things I take, they, and even Even one of the main topics that people choose to teach other people is how to be super efficient and effective at outlining your project and then accomplishing it step by step in a methodical way and organizing your time and being constantly attentive to doing the right thing at the right time and getting it done. And to me, I just cannot live that way at all anymore. And it's not how I want to accomplish any of my projects. I hear you. I, I'm exactly the same way. And I used to use lists. 
I mean, there mm-hmm. was a time where I would do, um, we, we talked about segment and tending. Well, you can also kind of break up your day in terms of, of breaking it up into mini days. I think that's what they used to call it. So yeah. your, your mini days are like, you know, 8 to 10, 10 to 12, yes. 12 yes, to 2, yes. and so on and so forth. And for yes. each one of those mini days, you, you attack whatever it is you're going to get done in that mini day. You finish the mini day, yeah. you go to the next mini day and do the next project, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that drove me nuts. I couldn't get anything done that way. In fact, if I look at a list that I put together of, of tasks that I know I have to get to, uh-huh. and I try to put them in order and then work them in order, I kill my motivation so fast that oh, okay. I never get through the list. You know, the only yeah. way I can get through a list is I put the list up and then I look at the list and say, okay, which one do I want to do right now? I want to do that one. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. That's the yeah. only way I can get through a list. That's me too. Really? Me too. And. Well, yeah, I, I have these little pieces of paper that are like three inches by five inches, and I and I um, I write at the beginning of a day. Sometimes, not every day, I write a list of the things that are on my mind because I, I want to remember. Well, what is it, what is it I want to get done today, and what's the most important? So the only things that go on the list are the things that I think are really I'm going to get them done, and they're important. Then, and I almost will almost make that list like Monday morning or. Sunday afternoon, or I'll make it on Thursday, whatever, but it'll cover the next three days. So like I'll put, I'll put Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, and, and then, or I'll put just the day Thursday, you know, or Monday. And then I'll, I'll put sometimes a time block. Like you said, like I'll put a mini day, I'll put, I'll put 10 to 12 or 12 to one that I'm going to, I'm going to do a particular thing. And then I can pretty much stick to that and make it work. But I noticed that it is it, exactly what you said. It is probably the main motivation killer is once I make that little list. Yes. Um, and then it, because it sort of puts it in this realm of like have to do stuff, you know, like, yeah, this is right. What I have to do. Yes. And it's it also in the list of like, um, it's no longer a spontaneous event of occurring because I'm enjoying my life and I'm just sort of, Oh, I think I'm going to actually go out and work in the garage and do some decluttering for a while. And then I, you know, or I think I'm going to, um, you know, work on my, my project for creating my group coaching. And because I'm inspired to think about this, creating my niche, I want to, I want to sit down and work on this niche idea. Um, that's so different than putting on my, you know, lists, you know, one to two declutter the garage, mm. you know, two, two to four work on finding my niche. Um, and then I, what I find is I, I, I still often have that same list that I made on Monday morning, it'll be there sitting there on Thursday and I'll realize, well, I did two of those things. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's but what, what else happens. Is, yeah. I mean, it's happens. crazy. Cause if, cause when you, when you, uh, this, I mean, you described it really nicely how, okay, I see, I'm going to do this at this time period, this at this time period and this at this time period. And now I feel like I've taken all my power away from myself because I look at that list and I say, well, I'll, now I'm locked in. I don't have any choice in the matter. And that's mm-hmm. when I start to feel depressed about it. Yeah. Because I don't feel like I have any control anymore. Even yeah, though I just controlled anymore. it. No, it's not fun at all. And even though I'm the one who's in control of making the list, when I'm all done, it feels miserable. Whereas, th- this is why I like what um, Abraham teaches, Abraham Hicks. They teach mm-hmm. the idea of segment intending. We met- I mentioned that a minute ago. Segment yeah. intending is where you get yourself into a, uh, your happiest state and you go do whatever it is you're going to do next. And yeah. I've tried combining segment intending with scheduling, and I can do it to a certain extent, but I found I'm still really not very productive that way. I'm much more productive when part of my segment intending is to look at my list and say, which one do I want to do now? I want to do that one. Okay, I'm going to get really excited. Boom, all of a sudden I'm excited. Hmm. And if I keep doing it that way, I actually do work my way through the list eventually. You know, maybe Uh not in in the what somebody else would consider to be the ideal time, but it always gets done in a timely enough manner, you know, just mm-hmm. because somebody else thinks it should be done by five o'clock. If I don't think it really needs to be done by five o'clock, I'm willing to do it tomorrow. Now that, that's a little mm-hmm. tricky if you're working for a boss, you know, if you're working for a boss, well, you got to do what the boss tells you, but you know, if it's your own stuff and you know that you really don't need to get it done for three days. So this five o'clock deadline today is really just something you imposed on yourself. That's where I say, stop doing that because it doesn't feel good. It's yeah. hard to get yourself into that good feeling place, that high vibration, in alignment place that you need to be in. That segment intending really gives you the best results from. So I wonder how somebody who's working for a boss does get themselves into this place we're talking about. But maybe that's a topic for another. It's actually a good topic, I think. I think it ties in very nicely. 
Um, yes. In fact, I can think of a situation that I really don't want to discuss on the podcast, but it's it's going on now with uh, Louise's gardening business. And within that context, it's what the answer I think for that context is also, in my opinion, true across the board, which is you're dealing with a team or ideally you're dealing with a team. Actually, many companies, you're dealing with a bunch of people competing against each other. But if the company is in any way well run, the the people in the company have become a team to some degree. So yeah. you're dealing with a team. And when you deal with a team, it becomes even more important, I think, to segment intent. By segment intent, I mean to get yourself in the high vibrational place. And ideally, mm-hmm. you want the team to get into the high vibrational place. Very few companies mm-hmm. are willing to do that. But uh-huh. when the team is willing to, to, to get to, into a high vibration place together, that's mm-hmm. where you get the true co-creative experience that, that Abraham talks about. That's where yeah. everyone is really contributing, not just their ideas, but their energy, their excitement, their enthusiasm. And then you right can on. feed off of each other that way. So a company yeah. is actually an ideal location to do segment intending with the, the everybody getting into alignment thing. Now, of course, what you run into is many companies – no, they don't even want to bother doing that. Get into alignment? What the hell? Are you crazy? You know, that's that's a bunch of nonsense. We got some work to do here. <laughs> yeah. And well, most companies accomplish it by giant spreadsheets. I mean, oh, yeah, way. of course. Yeah. So and, yeah, pro- project managers who have to be really good at that. So you don't get um, the advantage of, of the team building the energy together. But that doesn't mean you can't get yourself into alignment. It's a little bit harder. It's not yeah. not as easy as when you're doing it as a team. But, hey, we all have to learn this anyway. We need to learn how to get into alignment, not just at work, but anywhere. I mean, adverse circumstances well, are just part of life. So it's a really good skill to learn. Yes. And how to sequence your activities according to what feels best. And yeah. that's that's sort of like the essence of accomplishing a big project. Um, I, I was listening to Esther Hicks was saying, you know, the way you accomplish a big project is the same way you find a parking space, mm. you know, using law of attraction. And as as – as absurd as that might sound, you know, and, and, and as petty as it sounds, oh yeah, I'm going to send my, I'm going to send my guides ahead and find a parking place, or I'm going to, I'm going to have this total confidence that I'm going to just find my parking place and there it'll be. And that's the same way you accomplish a great big project that has 200 moving parts to it. Well, what she said is that she was at a film festival with all these friends of hers. And I think it was, you know, a bunch of girlfriends and they were in a car together, the four of them, and they had to drive to different venues around town that whole weekend to go to different films where they were being shown. And so they, um, they each, then, you know, the entire town was swarming with people and, and parking places were at an absolute premium. Mm-hmm. And so the, the four of them were all law of attraction enthusiasts and they would get into the car and just get all giddy and, and playful about their next parking place and so she said everybody was so relaxed, laughing so much, having so much fun that they just each time found a most perfect parking place right in front of the venue that they were going to. And it just they were just like rolling with laughter exactly. because it just worked out so well. Yeah. And and they and she's saying that's how you accomplish the biggest, most yeah. intense projects you can imagine is you you have this complete faith that it's already done for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that parking place, that, that project is already done in your vortex. Source has knows exactly every single step for you to get there, but not only knows every single step, but knows how you are going to have the most fun, the most creativity, the most, you know, synchronicity, the most meeting the most, the, the most amazing people and doing it in a way that it's going to be creative and it's going to produce a project that is going to be inspiring to other people, beautiful for other people, beautiful for yourself, and you're going to have fun every step of the way. Mm-hmm. Now, and that's a tall order. You you know, if you were trying to do it, if I was trying to give myself that experience, and yet that's what's possible when we totally give it over. It's true. To, to knowing that that. It's already created. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I know we both experienced that in our lives. We, I'm sure many of our listeners have experienced it in their lives. It really is true that when yeah. you get in that place, and it, it does take some work to get there, uh, but once you get there, boy, things happen, and things happen speedily. I mean, just bam, all of a sudden, stuff's right there. Like, whoa, this is really amazing. So, I mean, that that's why we do the Daily Dose of Happy, because I want to help encourage people to get into that place. 
once you're in that place, and, and if, if we can help you get there, that's great. Um, once you're in that place, I mean, I do it for myself. That's why I do the podcast. And I'm sure you do too. The podcast is a way for each of us who do the podcast to get ourselves into the higher flying places. And once mm-hmm. we do, things happen. Amazing things happen. So, I mean, yes, that's that, yeah. to me, that's what life is. Life is learning how to get into that high flying, high vibrational, really good feeling place as often as possible and staying there as long as possible because that's when good yeah. things happen. Yeah. And even if you're working for an employer, you know, in a, I, I, I think that probably the best thing to do is to say, I know this is going to work out the way I need it to work out and mm-hmm. I can have fun doing this work. I'm going to have fun doing this work, especially if you have leeway to make choices in your job and everybody pretty much does, you know, mm-hmm. so we can, we can go into any situation having this faith and this trust that this thing is already created in our vortex. Because if we have that longing for it or just that, if we know what we don't want, then it's then what we do want is created. If we know what we do want, then what we do want is created. And so Source is constantly offering us, um, you know, suggestions and ideas and people and possibilities. And it's all just a matter of what we're putting our focus on. But the thing that we tend to do is put our focus on what's, you know, what hasn't yet manifested. You know, we, we get into, well, yeah, I want to have this great group coaching program that I've created, but I'm, I'm just at the, I'm at the very, very beginning of trying to define what my niche is and what my modules are going to be about. And I've got to get it all the way to having it, having it marketed. And I've set a deadline for September 15th and, and I want to, and I want to make money with this thing. And, you know, there's so many complications we can bring that are conditional oh, yeah. and we, and so we're looking for, well, you know, prove to me in this moment that, that I'm going to be successful at this. And what Abraham Hicks says, you know, you, you got to, you got to know that, that you are already successful and look for the fun of that's being offered to you as your journey. You know, your source is offering you a fun way to get there. And now it's just, can you relax enough to trust that I'm going to get into the feeling of it already being accomplished. My project is already a done deal and I'm going to enjoy the fun of today, wherever I'm at in the project that I'm going to be showing the right things to do. Well, for people who, for people who want be- to prove stuff, who want to prove that, you know, there, it really is going to happen. Good stuff's going to come and so forth. I fully recommend the Pam Grout books, E squared and E cubed, because they are uh-huh. just, that's exactly what they are. They are books of experiments for you to do to prove to yourself that the law of attraction really works. Mm. Um, and, and if you really want to prove stuff, use those books. They are, that's exactly what they're designed for. And they're great for that. Um, yeah. But I, I have to say, on an ongoing basis, I am trying to train myself as much as possible, as much as I can get myself to do. I try to train myself to stop focusing on all those limitations, to stop focusing yeah. on all of those, well, this has to happen, or that has to happen, or why hasn't that happened? Because yes. I know exactly what they are, just what you described. They're, they're limiting thoughts. They're limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. And I, want to, I don't want them in my way. So I just focus on feeling good as much as I can. In, even in the midst of dealing with people who are feeling negative and espousing negativity and fighting and scratching or whatever else, I'm looking for where can I find my happy thought? Where can I uh-huh. find my feel-good place? Because if I can find uh-huh. it, even to some degree, it gets better. And then if, once yeah. I find it to some degree, then I can find it to another degree. I can kind of little you know walk the little scale, so to speak. And I can uh-huh. get myself there. And then once I get there, that's when I, uh, interesting things happen. I, I saw it at the end of last week. We had uh, some particularly difficult meetings we were deal with, dealing with. I mean, really, really difficult. Very, very uh-huh. painfully difficult. And uh-huh. I, I just determined, by God, I was going to make sure that I was in the happiest place I could reach for. And I, I couldn't always reach for a real happy place, but I could reach for happier. And so I did. Mm-hmm. And I got myself mm-hmm. in a happier. And when I did, the mood of the meeting shifted. Now, mm-hmm. I can't say it got great, uh-huh. but it shifted for the better. Uh-huh. And it happened every time. There were, there were multiple meetings. And each meeting that was supposed to be a really bad, difficult meeting, and sure enough, they all started off really bad and difficult. When I got myself feeling better, the meeting improved. Mm-hmm. I mean, just amazing. Well, and how did you conjure feeling good? 
any way I could, <laughs> whatever I could reach for, anything. Right. You know, yeah. both, fortunately, both days the weather was gorgeous. So, you know, I take a moment to say, wow, I love this weather. This is great weather. Yeah. You yeah. know, or, you know, boy, oh boy, this is, you know, we're going to go have lunch and I could really have some lunch right now. Oh, it's going to be so good. You know, whatever, anything I could reach for, not necessarily related to the topic of the day, because that often had too much negative emotional charge to it, but anything uh-huh. I could find just to get myself to feel better. And whatever yeah. degree I felt better, the mooding the mood of the meeting shifted. Right on. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that that uh, stands between us and having what we want is is only the, the degree to which we think we don't have it and that it's difficult to get it, you know, or that we have to work really hard to have it. Um, those are the things that, that stand between us and having it. It's uh, so ironic, right? I mean, y- you know, you you just don't even realize that it's literally the fact that like if I look at this whole project of creating this group coaching program and I think of it as a difficult big project that is an undertaking for me that I, I'm, wow, I hope I'm going to be able to accomplish this. I wonder what kind of result I'll end up with. Will I get, you know, people into my program? You know, will it, will they like it? Will the content be right? Um, you know, am I, am I going to be able to present it in a good way? Um, how am I going to market this thing? And if I get into all the feelings of that's hard and that's difficult um, or that I don't know how, or I'm, I'm at all worried about it. Then what I'm, that's the thing that stands between me and having it. Absolutely. But when I, but when I sit there in my easy chair and go, this thing is a done deal. It's actually already created. It's incredibly awesome program. It's all the excitement and joy that I want to communicate to other human beings is in this thing. And it's just built in, but not, not just by my mind, but it's built in there by create creative source of the universe is actually addressing people in this program through me where I get to fun experience all the fun of it and I get to enjoy presenting it and the marketing comes really easy and natural, as easy and natural as creating the whole thing. And when I get into that place of just knowing that that's the way it is, it's a done deal, that's the ticket to allowing it to happen. I agree. You know? Yeah. And it's so so funny, you know, that it's really it's that's how we get things done in this world. You don't buy a, a spreadsheet that's six feet long and three feet high and and start filling in all the blanks on the whole thing and then get <laughs> right. frustrated frustrated when you don't accomplish, you know, eighteen of those things in the right time. You know? yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well it, it's an amazing thing. The and and I know this is probably the hardest part for me. And probably the hardest part for most people, but I really advocate not getting all worked up about whether or not you're getting the project done on time. Yeah, that's really important to me. Because it's almost a guarantee. The more you get wrapped up in, oh my God, am I going to get it done on time? It's almost a guarantee you're not going to. <laughs> yeah. Where, whereas if you just let it go and say, you know what? I get it done when I get it done and it's, it's all going to work out well in the end. I almost always hit the deadline. I, I just never miss it when I do that because uh-huh. I'm taking the pressure off of myself and yeah. I'm taking my pressure off myself where the law of attraction is concerned too. I'm not focusing as much on, oh God, I haven't gotten to the deadline. The deadline's coming up. Oh, I'm feeling so bad. You know? Yeah. 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 I worked with a woman who wanted to be number one uh, salesperson in her, in her sales organization. And, uh, and that's what the, the sessions helped her go from being a person who, who was stressed about it all to being a person who was having so much fun that it, you know, and so confident of the, of the universe providing her the results that she wanted that, you know, it sort of took it all off um, her co- co- competitive situation with the other salespeople to where she just was in her own world of enjoyment. And that, and from that place of enjoyment, it just began to inform all aspects of her life. And I think that's so, that's so key to me. You know, it's, it's, I just, I just don't have, I haven't developed that muscle that well of enjoyment, you know, and of course I don't want to keep saying that, but, uh, but it is really true that, that to give myself permission to, but what I'm doing now is I'm giving myself like a three or four hour block every day that I'm saying, okay, well, I am going to commit to working on my project for say four hours today. Somehow I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to get in four hours, but then every time I focus on it, I go, okay, where's the fun? Where's the fun here? You know, like what, what feels exciting to me? What feels stimulating? What, how could I, 
approach any aspect of this that whatever what's coming to me what what's coming to me today to approach and how can i do that in a fun way what what would be easy and relaxing and and where i just know that this whole thing's going to unfold and what's your but, experience when you do that what's my experience when i do that is that um i i like <laughs> recently i went and sat at this this pond this great huge pond i go sit on the edge of and i and i literally took my laptop and i and I just started playing with all the different topics I've been working with on podcasts. And I just watched them all morph into eight different modules, you know, like all the topics, they arrange themselves into, into modules. And I saw, these are the things that I like to talk about. These are the things that are natural in my makeup as who I am as a, as a infinite being, you know, here playing on this earth. These are the things that, that I like talking about because those have been my, my 60 podcast topics I've chosen over the last six months. And they, they're, they're awesome to me. So I had total fun for about several hours just watching these things fall into these categories naturally. And I felt divine intervention of how it all came together. And that was the day I saw the fish jumping simultaneously, that story oh, I right. told of how, because I, I came to this point where I just realized I just want to, Look for the enjoyment in this whole process. And the second I said that, these four fish jump simultaneously simultaneously out of the pond. I remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, isn't that amazing how when you do get into that place where everything starts to feel easy, like you push the staples easy button over and over again, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And when you get to that place... It's almost miraculous how stuff seems to just fall in place. It just kind of lines itself up. And you say, what on earth just happened? Yeah. And it's true in my dating. It's true in everything that I try to do. Even if I'm decluttering the garage, it's like if I can be in that feeling like this is all going to work out. I'm going to end up with just the right amount of stuff. And I'm going to feel this wonderful streamlined feeling in my life. I'll have this Zen like life where I just won't be overwhelmed with clutter. And, and I just had that feeling of it being a done deal. It makes it so much easier to look in each box. You know, it's not near so overwhelming because I feel like, well, I'll get rid of what I want to get rid of now and what I keep, I keep and everything's fine. And I'll make this work out. Or if I, even if I'm pushing myself to say, I've got to get rid of more, then all of a sudden something happens. I get impulses that say, let's go ahead and see what happens if I get, get rid of this camping gear or, you know, I get rid of all this mountain biking stuff I have, you know, or I get, I, I pair this from, I, you know, I set a little fun goal. I'm going to take this from three boxes to one box. What's it going to take? So I spread out everything in the three boxes on the tables and I feel what feels good to me to really keep of this, you know, you know, I don't want to keep it all anymore. Yeah. That's a nice pump and that's a nice water bottle and all this stuff, but you know, I've got five water bottles, you know, let me keep two, you know, so which, <laughs> which three do I want to get rid of? And do I really need this thing anymore and this thing anymore? And it becomes just this game that I play with myself. So that's a long answer to your question, but. And how does it feel, though? I mean, I, I know how it feels in, in that it, it felt easy, but how does it feel to have it feel easy is what I'm trying to ask. It feels relaxing. You know, like I've, I've had to spend a lot of time just letting myself relax. And even if it means I'm not getting that much done, of course, I'm free to do that because I'm self-employed. But, you know, sometimes I'll just lay on the couch if I'm feeling any kind of stress. It's, it's going general, you know. So it, it feels... Like, you know, I'm not, I'm just not going to put it, put myself in the category of worry. A second I'm in that category of trying too hard and stressing over it at all, I'll do whatever it takes to just back away from it. So that's when I get the impulse sometime, I'm just going to go up to the mountains and sit on the, the creek and I'm going to take the things I can do up there. And there, that tells me I'm just going to have fun. I'm just going to enjoy myself. So it just always feels like pressing the easy button. I guess it feels it just feels like relax, you know, Tom, chill out, you know, let this happen. Let the universe do this for you. Let source orchestrate this. So does that answer your question? Yeah, partly. I mean, for me, the, uh, the answer of how it makes you feel is it makes you feel good. It's like, yeah. Oh, wow. That was, that really was <laughs> easy. I, I can just yeah. relax. 
I yeah, can yeah. relax more than I was even relaxed before. This is this is like this is good. This is great. Yeah. You know, yeah. Where's my magic wand? Let's just wave the magic wand for a while. <laughs> I guess I still have. I guess to be honest, I guess I still have some apprehension that sort of is in the background of like, well, will, will I get this thing done by being so casual and so relaxed? But um, well, I've been there. I know how that feels. I and I still get that occasionally. I usually get it. When I'm at the beginning of a project, once I'm in it, I, I don't seem to get that anymore. But what, before what? it gets going, yeah, I'll still get that sometimes. And it does take a little mental, you know, discipline, so to speak, to say, uh-huh. you know what, I'm just not going to let that come into my attention. That's just not going to happen. But you're right. It, it is something that can happen. It was easiest when I was creating the the six dances I put on here in Boulder because each time, like, creating all the marketing and all and all the the playlists for the dances I, it was i could always ask myself really easily am i having fun doing this because it was a simple project in a certain way all i had to do is create a whole bunch of awesome music that was you know i did it according to beats per minute and all this stuff so it had it had some organization to it but then even the marketing and everything i just kept i demanded of myself that i have fun you know which sounds kind of you demanded that you have fun <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, right. well but I decided that I would have fun and, um, and, but I wouldn't let myself do it if it, if I didn't feel good in the doing of it. And that was a simple enough project that it gave me a great experience of what it feels like when I act from that place. So it was sort of like a practice run of creating something that, so that when I would create projects that, you know, cause see with music, anytime I put on a piece of music, it was fun. You know, and then I would demand, I would ask myself to get up and dance. I, I'm using the word demand. So it, it shows me how I push myself, you know, so I've sort of pushed myself to be relaxed as kind of weird. Um, but I'm learning, I'm learning to be more and more and more relaxed. Well, believe it or not, we don't get this very often, but we actually have a listener who has called in and uh-huh. I think they'd like to talk with us. In fact, I think it's somebody from Connecticut because I recognize a Connecticut area code. So Let's uh, tune them in and find out who is calling in today. Who's there? Hey, hello, Walt. It's Mike McEwen. How you doing this morning? Mike, how you doing? Mike's one of the co-authors yeah. of our book, Your Daily Dose oh, of Happy, Real Success Stories of the Law of Attraction. Yeah, Mike. Awesome. We're, we're, we're actually, Louise and I are yeah. getting ready to, to see you and Anne Marie on Wednesday. We're looking forward to that. So great of you yeah. to call in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and I want to thank you again for uh, allowing me to be a part of that that project. It's uh, it's amazing to be able to to be in a book. I never thought that would happen in my life. But, uh, <laughs> thanks to you. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, uh, and also the topic that you guys are uh, talking about today is I can relate to so much. My background is in construction, and I would always look at a project that getting the end results. We got to get this done, and very often I would enjoy the the journey through the project. And <laughs> reflecting back and thinking of things that happened during that process, that things would go wrong uh, by trying to get to the end results too quickly. Because uh, you would just you would not be in a great frame of mind, and the law of attraction would kick in. And and then when you had those thoughts of "Oh, I'm just going to get done on time," or, I'm afraid this may happen, and sure enough, it would happen often. So this is a great uh, topic and and a subject where people trip up a lot and. Uh, so you, uh, you're reminding me to enjoy the journey today, and I really needed to hear that. So I just had to call in and, and thank <laughs> you for this. Because <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm evolving from construction into other areas of my life that, uh, that are all new to me. And it's a great reminder about the thing that I'm going to embark upon today to enjoy the journey, because it's not easy to, to take on other career paths. Uh, when this is the only thing that you've really been doing for the past 37 years of your life. So yeah. <laughs> enjoying the journey is very important. So yeah, you know, absolutely. Spot on with what hey, Mike, I got to ask really you something because the- cause, uh, you mentioned, yeah. of course, that you're in construction, which you are. And with construction, I mean, you, you kind of do have to do things in a, in a certain order. I mean, you can't really put up the frame until the foundation is down, and you really can't start, you know, blocking out the rooms until you got a, a frame up. I mean, it, 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 there is a certain order you have to do things. So how do you deal with the fact yeah. that, you know, sometimes you, you don't really want to do it in that order? <laughs> right. You you, well, um, there's times when you have to just stop and, and really just focus on, on now on what's happening right now because in in the construction industry 
especially today's world, people want it done in a snap of a finger. So, of course. Uh, although we're looking at the end results, you know, how we're going to get there, uh, you're absolutely right. You've got to get a strong foundation. And that's when things fall apart. And so it becomes a defined focus on this step right here, right now. What do we need to do right now to complete this task before we can add the next piece to the, to the puzzle? And, uh, <laughs> and I, think, I think getting joyful about it sometimes really helps. Uh, so like what, what's your what technique happens, you know, when, you, when, you want, when you want to get joyful like what do you do I mean you're, you're in the middle you, you know you got to do piece X next in, in your construction process and you need to feel good right. about it How, what, what's your method how do you get there well often I would I would see this project you know being completed and the customer being happy and, and, and everybody getting paid and all of that working out uh, take a step back I do have uh an extra thing that most people, a tool that most people don't have in their lives is I'm a Tai Chi and Qi Kong uh, mm. instructor. So I, cool. I can, I can get into that, that mellow place with using the, the ability of my Tai Chi and Qi Kong, uh, just step mm. aside, just step away from it. Things get really thick and you know, this is not happening and the electrician didn't do what he had to do. And, and all of a sudden the homeowner is looking at me like, what, what happened here? <laughs> You just have to find that little happy place. Like you said, you have to find something to reach for. And that's what the law of attraction has helped me do as well. Um, and why does, and why uh, does Tai Chi and Qigong help you? Is that because they teach you to, to flow with the Qi, to flow with the energy? That's moving? Well, yes. Yeah, you recognize that when, when your body starts to feel stress and uh -huh. tense, that you can utilize techniques to get back into your, your uh, quiet, quiet your mind and mm -hmm. uh, get to your center. And that's when you can really think things clear and say, okay, wait a minute, uh, I'm heading down this path and I got to, I got to change direction. And before you get too far down the path and you have to spin back around and, and make it a long journey, you can use, utilize being quiet to uh, sort out the chaotic situations <laughs> to make a mm -hmm. better decision on, mm -hmm. on in that moment. So yeah, that's cool. You that did that a lot. Your, in your construction work. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been able to uh, have a better results with customers that are uptight about things just to stay calm, you know, even though the situation is yeah. not calm. You mm -hmm. must remain calm in that situation to change that energy, like Walt yeah. was talking about, <laughs> going through those meetings. Like, I can still relate to that, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think we all can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the podcast for me is, uh, it, it, you guys are... Uh, you're like uh, you're like my uh, you're my credibility list. I have to stay credible to myself now because I'm part of this podcast. I'm in the book, and uh, that's right. And it's a much softer <laughs> way. It's a softer way to introduce the teachings of the law of attraction to people because you guys make it fun, and we really enjoy listening to it. And of course, I I tell everybody about it now because you allowed me to be in your book. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, yeah. Mike, uh, I also wanted to ask you, did, did you want to take a moment to talk about the career you're trying to evolve to? Because that's kind of interesting in itself. Well, I've been playing in, in the healing arts for a long time with the Tai Chi and the Qi Kong. And uh, I am now at uh, Reiki level two uh, healing energy. And it's opening up some, some amazing doors for me. And uh, so that's the path that I'm you know, building uh, alongside my construction career is, is getting into the healing arts, being able to help people with mindfulness and teaching techniques on how to reduce stress in your life. And ah. I think we can, uh, we can agree that there's a lot of stress out there. <laughs> <laughs> just a little, just a tad. <laughs> <laughs> and I recognized a long time ago in the teachings of Tai Chi and Qi Kong that it is a study. And a lot of people were excited to, to like join a class we become part of a tai chi class or a qigong class but once they realized it was actually a study and they had to spend time you know like they were trying you know like they wanted to learn a, to play an instrument they, they would back off of it because you know people's lives were just too busy and they uh they, they would not commit to it as much so i developed a way to teach tai chi and qigong that you can utilize in everyday movements. So it's mm. like, oh, I don't have to take 20 minutes off to practice my, my art of Tai Chi or Qigong. I just have to remember to breathe this way and move this way. Oh, that's cool. And so, yeah, so I'm getting some, some really positive results. I just finished up uh, one of my first classes that I put out there to see how uh, people respond to it. So I'll take that data back and uh, 
tweak it a little bit and offer another class real soon and uh, uh just building it that way and and not thinking about <laughs> so much that i have to turn this into a paycheck because i no longer want to do construction i just need to keep thinking about i'm enjoying this journey mm. and this is uh this is bringing joy into my life and and joy into other people's lives so, well that's just it right there i, I mean keep that, focused that, on that. Yeah. that's what i was talking about earlier how important it is to to take the goal out of your your forefront of your mind because we can get so wrapped up on that goal that it actually turns into a negative and drags us down yeah. so I, I applaud you for doing that i think <laughs> yeah. that's great yeah yeah well then, you know I, it's a it's a it's a minute by minute you know thing sometimes because you know you, <laughs> oh, do, yeah. you do get well what trips me up a lot is uh my self-talk like i i will you know sabotage myself with those stinking thinking i call it <laughs> because terrible. you know you're 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 <laughs> you build a program and you're like well you know who who you know who, who's gonna want to be a part of this you know you, you just get these weird thoughts sometimes so uh, and you just have to relax and, and know that the universe will provide you the resources and the people will show up that will help with the project. And uh, I remember I remember when I first started off with uh, this journey and actually how we met Walt. Uh, I was sitting around talking with my wife and I said, really, we really like to uh, find a way to reach more people that, that practice the law of attraction. So we started a, um, a group called Step Into the Vortex, where we'd gather and, and have discussion about the law of attraction. And that's actually how Walt met, met us. Yeah, I, I found your, uh, your, your little piece <laughs> online. Yeah, and that's how I met you guys. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was like, we just relaxed and, you know, like, uh, you know, three or four people were showing up and I'm like, oh boy, this is not really working out that well. <laughs> but it, it really was working out that well because Walt found us and, and opened some new doors for us. So thank mm -hmm. you, Walt, for... Uh, for going out there and being a scout and looking for other people to help out with this. Well, thank you and, for uh, putting you the, the message showed up out at the right time. You, you had to put the yeah, message out for me to find right you. Time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it works both ways. We were co-creating on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, this is a great thing. And, uh, the podcast is, uh, enjoy the way you guys deliver your information. Um, it's a little bit softer than just, you know, going online and, and plugging into a, you know, and, and I love listening to Esther Hicks. Mm -hmm. and all those stories but sometimes it's uh you know you have to really focus and this you you focus but you guys keep it light and fun and and you add a lot of laughter to it so it's <laughs> it's really enjoyable to listen to the podcast <laughs> <laughs> just want you guys to know you're doing a great job it's a lot yeah, of fun thank you man and I, wow. and I love i love telling people about it and it's actually a great way for me to uh introduce this to other people you know mm -hmm. i'm a part of this project and i talk to talk to people about it and uh it's, yeah, I seem to be getting more results with that. So this is great. This is great. Well, thanks I for setting the list. Enjoying the journey. Yeah. Thanks, no, thanks, Mike. That's really great to hear. Thanks for listening. Thanks for setting yeah. the listeners our way. And uh, we're look, Louise and I are looking forward to seeing you and Anne Marie on uh, Wednesday night. We're going to go out and have dinner together. And that's that's always great. Every time we do that, we close a yeah. restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to close a new one this week. That's right. Yeah, I'm excited for that. <laughs> well, you... well, I got to get back to uh, I got to get back to enjoying my journey. I just thought okay. I'd call in and uh, say, "Hey, guys, and uh, keep doing what you're doing, and we'll chat soon." Okay, sounds great. Appreciate it, man. Thanks That's for the so call, nice. Mike. We'll okay. talk to you. We'll talk bye -bye to you. Now. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. See, that just lifts you right up. You get a list of calling, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah, it's so great. You get a whole other person's perspective, and yep. God, I love hearing other people talk about it too because uh And both so Mike and Amory are really well, great people. They're 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 very positive. Um they're fun to talk with. I mean the, the four of us get together and we really we, we we've had two meals together in restaurants and we've closed both restaurants so far. And, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean to the point no, where, where they wind it like are you guys gonna leave sometime soon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just love your conversation. Exactly. So yeah. So and we love doing the conversation good, here on the podcast. That's a good the same sign. Way. Yeah. I know we run out of time on this thing all the time. I know. Well we've just run out of time again. I mean it happened once <laughs> more. But before we leave, I wanted to give you a chance. How did somebody reach out to you? Because sometimes people need to have like a little personal attention. Attention. How do they get some personal attention uh, from you? Yeah, they can, they can go to my website, which is called you are joy, Y O U A R E J O Y dot com, and uh, sign up for a free session with me and see if you enjoy it. And if you do, we could do more coaching or not, you know, whatever's in, in the flow for you. Sounds great. Tom, we'll see you again on Friday. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Walt. Yep. And we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>